Hello everyone, this is Adam Taylor again with Texas Tulsa Connection. I'm back this week to uh, share another episode. Hopefully you've had a chance to go back and watch last week. So if you haven't, once you're through watching this one, please take a moment to, uh, to refresh yourself on kind of where we are with this series. One of the main goals that we have with this is to really show you where we've come from as a company, kind of how we started and where we progressed. We also are doing this to hopefully teach everyone else some of the steps along the way to keep you from making the mistakes that we have, as well as hopefully to motivate you throughout this process. It's been really exciting, really fun. I'm looking forward to uh, sharing this, this next one that we've got with you tonight, and uh, hopefully you had a chance to get some stuff out of it along the way. So what we're going to go at tonight is really our steps and the different parts of, uh, of where we started with e-commerce to where we are today and go a little bit more in depth, talk about the pros and cons. And so we're gonna take some time to visit eBay, which is where we all began about a year and a half ago. Then we transformed into really a retail arbitrage, primarily selling on Amazon and then to where we currently are right now, which is a private label seller on Amazon. So starting off at the beginning, about a year and a half ago, we were on eBay. I started the company with my wife and uh, really our entire goal was to just make a little extra money, more of a hobby that we started and uh, really enjoyed the, the process, enjoyed the time spending together. And so what we did is we went out and started going to garage sales, going to thrift shops, going to Goodwill, estate sales, almost anything you could imagine we went to. We would basically work all week long, then we would go to uh, spend our weekend doing those type of things, driving around town, any of the surrounding suburbs, and so hunting every deal imaginable. Uh, with our phones out, we're looking up products on our, our eBay app that we had, and just trying to find anything we could flip and turn around and make a profit with. Really had a lot of great success. We did that from really July of that year all the way through really December or maybe January when we started to, uh, to change over a little bit to some pallets, but had a ton of great success. We were, were coming home, stuff would sell, we were boxing it up, uh, shipping it off, and uh, the, the eBay app itself is really a, a great platform. You can go through and really just search anything you're looking for. Uh, it proved to be a great beginner's um, point to get started into e-commerce. And so um, some of the pros and cons I would say with that were pros, very, very, very small amount of startup money to, uh, to get going. In fact, whatever you got left over, extra spending money, and instead of going out for coffee or going out to dinner, you could probably use to start that business. In fact, we, were, we started off maybe only spending $50 on a weekend. It was really, really small. Um, we would then turn around and use any type of profit that we had from those sales and then buy more products the following week. And so it really, really took off. Uh, eBay pays pretty quick. Uh, so you, you just had a chance. PayPal right off the initial uh, start, I believe it's 15 days or 30 days for your initial one. But after you get going and have enough transactions, uh, it's just a few days after before you start getting paid. So it's a really, really great beginner's um, platform to use. Uh, some of the cons I would say with eBay would be the fact that you've got to do a lot of legwork. We spent a ton of time driving around town. We spent a ton of time researching. Uh, anytime something sells, you are shipping it yourself. We had to buy some uh, our scale. We had to buy packing tape, uh, peanuts, uh, those little air pocket pillows. And so that there was a little, or was a little bit of some uh, some startup cost with it, but it's really, really minimal. In fact, if you'll just keep any boxes that you get from buying anything online, you can reuse those uh, to ship back out with eBay. So really a minimum startup cost, but it actually also taught us dealing with customer service, um, which you're trying to detail, and that's really one of the, the more difficult parts of eBay, is that when you're getting stuff in, you're really trying to describe that particular product that in a lot of cases is very unique to a potential seller. And so you're photographing, um, your detailing, your, your listings take a lot longer, but it does prepare you for, or did prepare us at least anyway, for where we took our next steps into retail arbitrage and then where we currently are with, uh, with private labeling. At about December of that year, this would have been 2016, 
we actually started buying pallets. We would drive, uh, we actually live in Tulsa, we would drive about an hour and a half to Oklahoma City to a place that would get uh, Groupon, they would get Walmart, they would get Amazon uh, pallets. These would be, you know, some overstock stuff. These would be sometimes your returns, open box items. Um, some of them were used, actually most of them were used. Every once in a while you'd find something new. And then we started really flipping those pallets for a profit on eBay. Uh, that really kind of transformed where we were. So instead of maybe finding, you know, five or ten items on a particular weekend, you know, now all of a sudden we're, we're bringing in 50 to 60 items on a pallet at a time. And we were buying multiple pallets. Uh, that really started transforming, like I said, our eBay business. We, uh, we would increase from maybe having 40 or 50 listings consistently to now we're having 100, 150 listings um, every single week over and over again and selling multiple items in a given day. And so really things picked up, they sped up, uh, had, had some pretty good success right off the bat even in terms of what our profits were. Um, on that. We really did enjoy that. It was almost like Christmas when you'd get a pallet in and uh, you really just never knew what you were going to get. And so in terms of being exciting, finding new stuff every single time, not getting bored with the same product, going to the same stores, the same type of garage sales, estate sales, all those type of things, uh, it really allowed us to expand from where we were. And so we did that for uh, about, I would say, four or five months. In January of 2017, so about a month after we started the pallets, my sister and brother-in-law joined with us and we really started the company Texas Tulsa Connection at that time. We started expanding, going down to the Dallas Metroplex area, buying our pallets from a place called Discount, Discount Truckloads. They are amazing to deal with. Uh, we started off going down there, then we started just blind purchasing. Kind of, they, they figured out what we were looking for, which was primarily Amazon returns and they would start shipping us uh, pallets once they came in and we would buy them that way. So literally a semi truck would pull up outside our house and we would buy five or six pallets at a time. We enjoyed that tremendously. Uh, we had to build upon our skills in which we were, okay, we really have to detail uh, or list details of every particular product. You're trying to find out is anything wrong with it, you're testing it. Uh, but it was a whole lot of fun, we were able to flip pretty much everything. Uh, there were some things you're going to find that are broken, um, some things you just don't have a demand for. The demand is just really, really low. Uh, but as a whole, you're able to, uh, to make some pretty decent profits. Um, with that, I'd go back and pull my paperwork out to give you some exact details on it, but, but really enjoyed that process. My sister was doing it in Texas with her husband, and so we were both working simultaneously. We would ship out from each one of our houses. Um, with it. And so probably the pros I would say uh, is really kind of going from eBay to the, um, I guess not eBay, but the sourcing from thrift shops to actually the pallets is just the quantity of supplies that you're able to get. Quality probably would be comparable, you know, garage sale type stuff. You're really kind of looking at maybe some one-offs when you actually start going to the pallets. You're going to, to known commodities in which you can really find what the uh, what the price where the price should be for your listing, what the demand is, and everything else, and so you get that consistent flow. You've always got um, stuff to sell. You're not not really going out looking for more merchandise or items. It, it's pretty much you can get as much as you want whenever you want it. Some of the cons are probably very very similar to what we experienced on eBay. Is there is a lot of legwork that goes into trying to make sure that you've detailed every part of the product. If something's broken and you don't list it, the customer is not going to be happy. eBay is really, really strict in terms or actually it's very important on eBay to make sure you've got good, um, good feedback uh, as a seller. And so I know a lot of buyers base their, uh, their purchases off that. And so we spent a lot of time making sure we, we learned that part of it and did that correct. Uh, pricing things. Uh, ends up being somewhat tedious, but it is a lot better when you're buying the pallet side due to the fact that a lot of these items are coming off Amazon. So you can go look and see what the Amazon price is and uh, base your price off of that. Uh, as well as on eBay, you can tell how fast things are selling. So you kind of have an idea there where you need to price it to move it in a certain amount of time. Um, but we enjoyed that side. Like I said, some of the cons were really just the amount of time it takes to, to photograph, to list. Uh, Really, shipping wasn't too bad for us. We, we could ship, 
you know, probably 10 items a night if we uh, we needed to. They're pretty straightforward. We had all the, the stuff by then to be able to do that. And so really our business expanded quite a bit going from just the thrift shops to the pallets. But overall for us, we were looking for an easier way to expand, an easier way to grow. We didn't want to get stuck into, we can't grow the business if manually we're not spending the time every single night or every single weekend going out there and finding more stuff. And so that was really important to us was finding things in which we could continue to expand. Now we could have hired more people. We didn't feel like we were at that point in time in our business to doing so, but we still wanted to expand. And that's really when we started messing with retail arbitrage or online arbitrage. If you're not familiar with that, essentially that is going out to stores. You could be Home Depot, Walmart, Target, um, any store you have, truly Ross's, Marshall's, any of those stores in which you're going to find products, you're going to find new products, and you're trying to find them for a cheaper price, and you're trying to then flip those and sell them for a higher price, and really kind of kind of take advantage of that gap between um, what you can find it for and then resell it for on Amazon. And so you're looking for sales, you're looking for uh, any type of discount you can find, any type of clearance racks, you're, you're essentially... Um, it's almost like an Easter egg hunt, so to speak, when you go to those stores. And so, really, really fun, really exciting. You, you, you kind of—it's almost like golf, you know, where you, you might play and you—you're waiting for that really good shot uh, that really kind of keeps you going to the next hole or the next game. You're doing the same thing at the stores. You might show up to a, a Home Depot store and find absolutely nothing. There is nothing there. Everything's priced the same as you would find it on Amazon. And then you would turn around and go to the next store, and you might find four or five items in which you can use to uh, to resell. And so it was really kind of that game. We would spend most weekends uh, doing that. I might stop at a store on my way home from work every day. My wife kind of the same way. We would go through and just look for those type of things. Really, really exciting. It's really ended up being the same way that you would have it on eBay. Is the fact that over time you have to manually be doing the labor. We tried to switch to online uh, arbitrage. Uh, it's just a tedious task. Not saying we couldn't find items in which we were able to. We were able to find um, quite a few, but you really could not expand your business without actually manually doing more labor. For us, it, it's, it's a time deal. You only got so many hours in a day. You only have so much time in which you're able to go out and source products. But what that allowed us to do, we made the transition from eBay over to Amazon, was really to familiarize ourselves with the uh, Amazon Seller Central, the platform, some of the different apps you could use to go scan the products. And um, we were able to familiarize ourselves with that and prepare for when we made the jump over to retail, or excuse me, to a private label, which was ultimately where we've ended up today and what we're really happy with. Now, I'll kind of come back to the retail arbitrage now. One thing in which we have started um, toying with is a software called um, Tactical Arbitrage, in which it'll essentially search different websites for you. Uh, you can program in there you know, really what type of profit margin you want, either by the dollar or by the percentage. A uh, whole bunch of different categories. I'll come back here in a week or two and give you a, a review of that. One of the things as we found searching through that, there's lots of videos on how to use Tactical Arbitrage but there were not a whole lot of videos in which it showed you true reviews. And so we're gonna come back, give you an honest review, how we liked it, uh, how our sales were, what we thought were kind of some of the pros and cons of uh, going through that. And so we'll, we'll get some more detail on that. Just this video is not the time. Uh, right now, I'm trying to keep this thing somewhat short for, uh, for your convenience here. But where we are now, we are in the private label. As you can tell, you probably watched some other videos. We, uh, we have our own uh, product, Little Beast Travel Tray. Uh, we've got an infomercial and a commercial out uh, about that to, uh, to help get the word out. But one of the great things about Private Label is the fact that you really control the, uh, the sourcing of it. Uh, we, we source it from a manufacturer or producer in China. And so we're able to, uh, to go find on Amazon, we use Jungle Scout to, uh, to go do our research for us. And essentially what you're doing with Private Labeling is you are looking for, for products that are really already selling well. One of the things you really don't want to do is get outside the box too much in terms of, okay, we're going to take a big gamble on something that's not necessarily selling, and we're going to find a way to make it work. You're really looking for, for things that are already selling relatively well. Our goal is to sell 10 units a day, and uh, 
and make five to ten dollars profit obviously the higher the profit the better but we looked for is to find a product that was already selling relatively well and what can we do to improve it what can we do to make that product better what can we do to increase the demand and uh, and drive people to our particular product and so we looked at it we bought a whole bunch of uh, competitors ones we uh, we did a whole bunch of sale or had a whole bunch of samples made for our manufacturer in China and we literally spent time tweaking we would go out and have our son try it out okay what are things we liked about it what are things we didn't like about it we would try to break it we would try to mess it up and we just continued to prove upon that until we felt like we had a, a very premium product or very superior product which which we feel like we do and then we wanted to specialize in bundling giving more value for the money and so we added a seat belt pillow with our travel tray which uh, which we did kind of the same thing as we started sourcing it is trying to find out what's the best out there what's the best material to use what's the most um, I guess flexibility we have with the packaging to uh, to make it all work uh, in the end so we've been really pleased with that process it was a lot more time consuming than what we had originally planned on we started uh, I guess June and July of 2017 contacting suppliers in China we did not get our first product our first shipment in until November 20th and so it took us about five to six months to be able to get that product in and just there were some delays we did take a lot of time trying to design make tweaks samples I don't even know how many samples we sent back and forth but quite a few tons and tons of emails but they actually were a lot easier to work with than we'd originally planned which was awesome you kind of hear the horror stories and you're you're prepared for it to be the worst they actually were amazing we sent um, information I guess we sent um, really RFQs out to uh, to five manufacturers I believe and kind of handpicked the, the ones that we liked uh, out of that and so really it was a, a pretty smooth process all in all and we'll go into that in a future video some of the things we liked and didn't like with that but that really kind of brought us to where we are with the uh, the current private label if you ask me to decide which one we like the most it would definitely be the private label just can you control the product if you start to run out you order more if there's something wrong with it you can change it and tweak up the design and make it however you would like and so if you like electronics more if you like toys more if you like games whatever it is you can essentially control that product you can tweak it however you like it and so you can find an area in which you enjoy doing you like kitchen utensils you know go go find you a knife or go find you a can opener whatever it is tweak it make it better and uh, you, one you do a, a service for uh, the customer and being able to go and make that and make the improvements on the particular products until you're able actually to uh, to have something with your name on it to be able to sell on Amazon so it's been a really really great great process so I'd say we enjoy the private label part the most negatives to that it does cost a fair amount of money to start up you, know, you can look online and they'll you'll see people all the time five hundred to a thousand dollars we found it to be much more expensive we found it to be closer to three to five thousand by the time you do your pictures all the samples the shipping the taxes the the customs all the different parts of it add up over time and so it's about the three to five thousand dollar range uh, for our first order some of that will come down as we uh, make larger bulk orders in terms of getting our our product for cheaper um, the shipping costs will start to come down with that and it takes about 30 days once you place that order in China and about 30 days by sea to get it to uh, to our house to be able to, uh, to start sending out but we have enjoyed the private label we are always interested in a while we're kind of drawn back to the retail online arbitrage and so we are with that tactical arbitrage going to kind of give it another round and uh, look at it but but we are really excited for it. We're excited where we've gone, gone through. We will come back in future videos and I will really detail the process. I'll give you some more stats, some more numbers on, uh, on what we did on eBay, what we've done with the retail arbitrage, obviously the re uh, review on the tactical arbitrage and kind of where we are right now in detail with the, uh, the private label. So uh, if you get a chance, go leave us some of your comments. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, at the bottom after you're through and please subscribe to our channel we look forward to put out good content uh, our goal is to send out something once a week and uh, we're gonna hold true to that we really I get excited every Wednesday when it comes up just to be able to come and and share some more stuff and our really our goal is to help you make less mistakes than we did and to keep you motivated you can do it 
It's just something you have to stick to and keep working through some of the processes. So, like I said, look forward to hearing from you, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next week.